been a fun week. You've seen what I've done with my first project. And now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my third project. Yes, I said third because the second one, it's complicated. I wasn't able to get it completed. And that's just going to be a, another video. And it's going to be a lot of fun because you'll get to see the complications. Anyway, so this is my 75 gallon tank that I used at the other house in King George as a Neriite snail tank. It just had snails and it was like that for probably about a year. I decided to bring it here and I took the snails out, not all of them, there's a couple still in here, and I'm going to turn this into another sorority tank. But you're not going to know what kind of sorority tank it is until the end, and that's a surprise. I have a lot of stuff that's going to go in here that may surprise people because I've never used lilies, uh, pond lilies, that uh, normally go in a pond. So I'm going to use that. I'm also going to use pretty much everything natural. You're going to, it's just, it's going to be wood. It's going to be uh, magnolia leaves. I'm going to have Indian almond leaves. It's just going to be an all natural tank. And it's everything that I have on hand. I didn't go out and buy anything. Everything is here. So I'm going to get started with this and you can follow along and watch to the end because you're going to want to see what fish I stick in here. done draining this tank I left about this much water in it and yeah there is a bunch of mom in it still but that's okay because that just means I've got a nice little ecosystem going on and what I do put in here it's it's gonna benefit it it's gonna be okay looks a little dirty but it's really gonna help it's gonna help and I'm excited so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with finally scaping this tank the lily that was in my tub so I'm gonna try putting it in here let's just see how it turns out I think it's gonna be gorgeous I thought a lot about the hardscape I wanted to do and I came up with just using stuff from before like I just wanted to use stuff that was laying around the fish room and not have to go out and find things for this scape because we've got so much extra stuff so I pulled the driftwood out and I started piecing it together and I came up with this scape and I I like it I don't know about you but I think it turned out pretty well I added some of the river rock because that's my favorite as far as stones go and I had a few extra laying around and so I stuck those in there and as far as like the substrate goes I just used what was already in the aquarium from the previous scape I had and that I think turned out really well I did have to get a little extra gravel just to kind of fill it up a little bit and make it I don't know balanced more I guess as far as how I wanted it to look in there so added the gravel and then my favorite part of all was adding the catapa leaves and the magnolia leaves because I was able to take those magnolia leaves and make them into almost like little caves because one of the cutest things I have ever seen is when a fish, especially a beta, peeks out from underneath of a little leaf or, you know, from a cave and their little head pokes out and they're like, hey, anyways, I just thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> These are my magnolia leaves that I got from my yard and I'm gonna go ahead and try them out. I do know that if you're a fan of tannins and stuff that these are, they're not gonna hurt your fish. They're not gonna harm them. Uh, they're fine. I, I boiled them probably for 
three different days in a row just to be on the safe side, soaked them for another few more days, and they're ready to go. They're nice and ready to just lay down in the substrate, so hee <laughs> hee. Now as far as the plants go, I decided with those, I didn't want to go out and buy a bunch of plants either. I used what I already had, and I really liked the pond lilies last year that I had in my tubs outside. And since we were moving the tubs already from the other house, I kind of took those from the tub and put the one in the aquarium because I thought, wow, you know, how cool is it for a beta to hang out under one of the little lily pads? It's perfect. Like it's perfect. And they're constantly shooting up and starting new lily pads. In this case, um, I didn't have a whole lot to begin with. So that's why this video has taken a little longer than just one uh, take. I let this go on for about, I guess a good week and a half because I wanted the lily pads to, I just wanted a lot more lily pads for the betas before I stuck them in. I did add some hornwort um, on the sides and the reason why is because I thought that would help with a little bit more coverage, more mid uh, coverage and also some uh, coverage at the top too and yes I know hornwort is not the best plant in the world for long fin betas but that's not what I was sticking in this um, aquarium so I wasn't as concerned about that. Of course moss is my absolute favorite of any plant. I love, 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 love moss. So I had to stick a little bit of that in there and I had some leftover. So that was awesome. I had uh, got a bunch of it when I went to the Keystone Clash and I've just got so much moss. I've got it from everywhere. So I had to add a little bit of moss in there. As far as filtration goes, I used two sponge filters. I already had one seated and I, I used that. It was an old sponge filter and it was perfectly fine, no big deal. But I did have to go take one out of inventory. So I have a second sponge filter and that is the Aquatop. I have a heater in there, it's adjusted to 79, and I don't really think that it's that necessary right now to have the heater in there, but I like to keep it in there at 79, just because I do have an air conditioner in there, and I don't know if it's gonna make it a little bit cooler here and there, so it's just easier to have it at 79 and be done with it. Don't forget, betas really do like to be anywhere from 78 to 82. I let the tank run for about a week before I added the dither fish. And that's just because I wanted to make sure that everything was okay. And, and it was, it was fine. I just wanted to give it a little extra time for the plants to get more established and stuff like that. That made it so that the dither fish had more time to quarantine too. So they were in the 10 gallons and I had them quarantining for about three weeks. So eh, usually six weeks is better, but I only did it for three weeks. My dither fish are the glow light tetras and the albino glow light tetras and I just absolutely love how they swim around together and they just do their own thing and they're super friendly. And I did add one more special fish in there but you're not going to see him because he hides all the time and that is an L129 zebra playco and he fits perfectly in that aquarium. And then of course I had to have my two Nereid snails because they're just so super cute. And this was their tank originally to begin with, so they get to stay. So it's time to add the girls and as you can see, I have 10 
female alien betas in a little container. Yes, they have stress stripes and no, they are not happy. So I'm acclimating them for a very short amount of time. The temperature in the um, beta house is pretty, uh, I don't know, everything's close enough as far as temperature goes that I'm not going to freak out if they're not acclimated for too, you know, for a long time. Like 30 minutes is usually what you want to do. But for them, I only did 10 because I didn't want to overly stress them because the poor things have gone through enough, you know, all in the same room together. It's like putting 10 females in a closet and turning the lights off and then turning them on and being like, well, you... You know what I mean, they're not gonna be happy. But once I got them out of that container and let them do their thing, they went around the tank and they started exploring. They started to see where everything was and they did the cute little things that I said that I love that betas do. And they went under the leaves and they went into the caves and hung out in the little beta logs and they went to meet their new friends, the Tetras, and they just had so much fun exploring. I could tell that they were much happier in there than where they were before. And I have not had any issues. I haven't seen any aggression. And one or two of the girls might appear sometimes with a little bit of a stress strait, but they disappear. Um, and so they're doing great. They're eating and I'm I'm just really happy with how this tank turned out and they're all doing great now and that makes me so happy. Love this little alien sorority. Okay, so something super important I wanted to talk about when it comes to sororities. I found this out firsthand and I like to share my experiences with people, whether they're good or bad, just because I think it's important for you to learn from my mistakes as well as the things that do work out for me. So moving a sorority can be challenging when you take the water out and you're moving the tank and you're putting the fish in like a bucket or something to move them and it depending on how far away you're moving it's just really stressful for them and it disrupts like the balance like beta sororities have a balance if it works it works don't mess with it leave it alone so when you're moving them and you have to move everything out and you have to reset everything back up, it can, it can fail or it can work out. What happened with me with one of my sororities is it kinda did a little bit of both. I had two girls that just wanted to be jerks. They didn't wanna get along with the other girls anymore. They had been raised from babies together and it just didn't work out when they were taken out and put back together. So those two girls are no longer in my sorority that I have. Um, and the other girls, a few are having to go through some treatments, some for, you know, their fins getting a little bit messed up and they're doing really well. They're eating, their fins are growing back and the girls that are together now are doing great. As soon as I get them all healed up and ready to go, I'm definitely rescaping that, that aquarium because it needs, needs a major, major overhaul and it just, it just needs some work. <laughs> All right, I had so much fun making this video and I hope you enjoyed it as well. I feel like it's, it's one of those things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've wanted to have an alien sorority and it's just, I've never been able to get around to it. And now doing this, this scape, it was just, it was awesome because I was able to take a little bit of nature put it in my aquarium, and also take stuff that I already had that I wasn't using and put it together and make a special home for these fish. 
Female aliens don't get enough attention, and you know what? They need love too. So if you decide you ever want to get an alien, why don't you get a female instead of a male? They're just as awesome. And I don't want to forget you dads out there. Happy Father's Day. Anyways, have a wonderful day, everybody. And I'll see you next time. My next project is going to be a blast. Thank you.